Hello, I'm Terry Kolath. I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kerr. And this summer semester, we're moving on with the professor to Edison, Westinghouse, and Tesla, the War of the Currents. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Terry. Nice to be back at Shell Point. Yeah, so this is very interesting. I mean, I had never even thought about how AC and DC came about and what it meant and who the driving forces were. And you've really nailed it in this talk. Well, in the um, 19th century, there really was a war going on between the two different methods of, trans of generating and transmitting power for lighting and, and power to houses and commercial properties and factories. And there were two competing technologies, just like, do you remember uh, recorders? Um, Beta. Beta Max and the eight. So VCR. they they actually fought themselves to a standstill, and there's only one technology was going to win. You can't have two technologies because people have to have the same machine player and the same cartridge, and so v VHS won, and so B Sony lost. Very, very rare loss on the part of Sony. The same applies to electricity. There had to be one, one form of electricity that we all could use. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were two giants who were at war, literally at war, and would use any opportunity to destroy each other's case. On the one hand, you had Thomas Edison, who is a famous American icon, of course, and uh, given the credit for the phonograph um, and also the light bulb, although he actually didn't invent the light bulb. He just yeah. perfected it. Yeah. Um, so he was a giant, and uh, he was playing with electricity, and he believed the future of transmitting, generating and transmitting electricity was direct current. Now, this is all very boring physics stuff, but direct current is what you get from your battery today. Oh. So your cell phone, your car battery is a direct current. There is an alternative, which we use for our houses, and everywhere now we use for houses and commercial properties and factories, which is alternating current. But the two giants we had on one hand, Edison pushing his direct current approach, and then we had a gentleman from the Eastern Europe um, called Tesla, who was a genius and came to work for Edison. Um, and he broke away from Edison because Edison didn't give him the rewards that he anticipated. Mm -hmm. So he formed his own company and then literally was um, fought Edison all the way with uh, developing AC power. And Westinghouse came along and joined him. And so the two wars were on. Okay. And the deciding factor was who would get commercialization. And so Edison actually had the first commercialization in Wall Street. Um, um, but the big opportunities were in the um, international fairs. Mm -hmm. There was an international fair in Chicago, and who would win the contract to supply lights for the, the, the most recent international modern fair based on technology? And in fact, it turned out that um, Tesla and Westinghouse won it. And that was the beginning of the end for DC. Just before it all went horribly wrong for Edison, there were some scurrilous events that took place where Edison demonstrated how dangerous AC current could be, electrocuting horses on camera. He was literally in the final stages of his business going down, and uh, eventually it failed and uh, AC prevailed. Really? And the company that was created um, was GE, General Electric, um, was wow. created out of the bones um, of the failure um, from Edison to produce a viable supply of electricity. So GE um, grew, it was General Electric, before that it was Edison's company. I didn't know that. Yeah. And Tesla, now, how does that Tesla relate to Tesla is an interesting guy. He was a crank um, and became quite unstable, lived in a hotel that didn't talk to anybody apart from once a year. Um, and he came up with some stunningly creative ideas, but some stunningly crazy ideas, um, which we'll talk about. Um, but, of course, we know Tesla, not because of the man um, in his period, but because uh, they have chosen, a, a couple of entrepreneurs have chosen to name their electric car company Tesla, um, which is just coincidental. And now, of course, Elon Musk um, sold one of his companies and bought the controlling share of Tesla car. And we're going to talk about the, the whole idea of battery-operated cars, which, in fact, are not new. Believe it or not, going back, this is why it's an interesting subject. Thomas Edison produced DC batteries, which is his strength, and he put them in a car, vehicle, and they drove across America. 
in an electric car in the early 20th century. So it's taken us 80 or 90 years, or more, more 100 years, to rethink electric power. And then we'll finish off by saying, are electric cars greener than internal combustion engines? And it's, an in, it's a very challenging intellectual debate, which we'll have. That's wonderful. OK, so Edison, Westinghouse, and Tesla, war of the currents. You'll get a lot more information than you can imagine. Hope you join us.